This tale is, as all bard songs are, an adaptation. It may contain adult themes and strong language. Welcome, dear listeners, to Abyss. Welcome to episode 8 of Abyss. So, who are you? What are you? And to celebrate today, which is Manatee Appreciation Day, what is your favourite fact about manatees? Starting with Shiraz. Hello, I'm Shiraz and I play the Dragonborn Ishidoro, who is a rogue, and this question has thrown me for a loop. So I'm going to use the one fact that I do remember about manatees that uh, people used to think that they were mermaids at some point because of their vaguely human shape. Okay. Wednesday? Hi, I'm Wednesday. I play the character Desolation or Layla, the tiefling ex-soldier. I'm very upset with you, Shiraz, because you stole my manatee fact. <laughs> it was like the <laughs> only thing I knew. It's Take benefits to being the first. <laughs> oh, it's because... Yeah, because I also love mermaids. The whole thing about manatees being mermaids and like, you know, I don't know. It's not really a fact, but they're super cute because they're chimungus and they just sort of lay in the water. So I don't know. I don't think that's a fact though, but okay. there we go. That's my opinion. That's fine. Next we have Freya. Hello, I'm Freya. I play Nal, the half of rogue. And I really only know one fact about manatees, and that is that they're unfortunately classified as vulnerable on the red list of species in the world. So they are currently vulnerable as a species. Okay, hopefully get a happier note with Tono. Yeah, I know a fact related to manatees and not about manatees, and a sad fact that is actually about manatees. So which one do you want? Your character first, please. Well, I'm playing Rastakos, the human warrior. Go with the sad fact first, so we get all the right, sad news right. out of the way first. Manatees were actually hunted for a while by the indigenous people of the Caribbean, and the way they would do this was they would sail out in canoes, offer bait to make the manatee come up to the surface, and just hit it in the head with an oar. Oh, doesn't Not sound very really efficient. <laughs> <laughs> and it, it would them to kill it because it was to, you know, stun them so that it would flip over in the water. Oh. The non sad fact that isn't directly about manatees is they are closely related to, but not the same as, dugongs. So dugongs are not manatees. Are they not? No. No. They're closely related, but they're not the same. Dugongs like are smaller, aren't they? I think so. I think manatee covers like three species, while dugongs cover their closest related cousin. And dugong, of course, is the uh, evolved form of seal. No. Of course. <laughs> oh god, damn it! Dugong, dugong is the same family as manatees. Did anyone? Is it just the two of us that got that? Mm-hmm. Never mind. Yeah. I think so. No one else knows what I'm talking about, so it's fine. Dragon. Hello, I'm Dragon. I'm playing the drow Trisnitra. She is a drow who was imprisoned for trying to run away because she got hit with random magic. And quite frankly, she doesn't trust the rest of the city with that magic. Random manatee fact. Yes. 
Okay, the closest living relatives of manatees and dugongs are elephants. They're sea elephants. Sea elephants. Sea I, elephants. I can't, oh, I can't sea elephants. Ele- ele- yes, the, okay, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes, we're sad <sighs> bastards. And mm-hmm. finally, Susie. Hi, I'm Susie. I play 13, the enthusiastic goblin minion. And my fact about manatees is that, like all sort of large, gentle, slow moving creatures, they can actually move pretty fast because manatees can swim up to 20 miles per hour for a little bit mm. and then they get tired. But when they're usually swimming around, it's about three to five miles per hour, mm. which is faster than you'd think. It is. Mm. It is. Also, one of those creatures that don't have a reputation for like being dangerous. Unlike dolphins. Yeah. Unlike dolphins, who dolphins are absolutely are vicious bastards. bastards. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah, they seem to be quite gentle. Probably why they're endangered. So, what happened last week? Yeah, Sorry. somebody please tell me what happened last week. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, demon stuff. <laughs> <laughs> The Mormon King explained that they can't find the surface no matter what direction they go in. Ishidoro found demon magic seeping into the city and we got sent out to a place called Mental Dereth. Mantle something Dereth. like Mantle Dereth. With a scholar monk type dwarf. Because apparently something had showed up there and that the drow were fighting to take it, so that means it must be interesting. And she realises there is a sloth demon and that the dwarves we can see at this outpost are dead but propped up. However, our scholar is completely oblivious and very insistent that they're alive and waving to us. Again, Ishi does amazingly because he manages to make a ward, a sigil which helps to stave off the exhaustion that we're getting from being close to the sloth demon while the scholar offers to bless things with cider. After that, Thirteen and Stool both went to sleep and Stool woke up screaming that there was a big green thing that was going to try and eat him, whereas Thirteen woke up and said there was a big green thing that was very friendly with lots of teeth and smiled and showed their teeth off. Nal was offended that we were all talking about evil big green things. There were three doors into the outpost and when we went in, we found some drow with a dead were rat. So we think that they were part of the hunting party that was sent out after us because we also found one of the other escaped slaves who had ripped the drow limb from limb, which was somewhat concerning, but the two groups had killed each other off, so kind of left it at that. Then up on the top level, there was a possessed dwarf with the whole, like, solid white eyes, demon possession, all sorts of things, and a multifaceted black gem. So Scholar tells us that that ties the demon to this plane and we need to break it, but it must be broken in a holy place, such as the anvil in Gontilgrim, because they decided to make the anvil for their blacksmithing double up as their altar. So took the gem back to Gontilgrim, broke it, and the city no longer feels demonic. And 13 has no more bees in a jar. Yes, 13 used all of her hornets in a jar. She's still got a jar of flies, though. Ew. We reckon she's got the chills, guys. We suggested that she did not try to recapture the hornets with the flies. So, you spend a couple of days once you get back to sort of enjoy the fact that you don't really have any pressure to do anything now you're back in the city and after about two or three days of sort of recovery you're approached by a guard who tells you to come seek audience with the king so yet again you are brought into this quite large chamber where the the king resides and immediately you notice the king talking to what seems to be this gigantic stone golem that seems to be about maybe 12 foot, 13 foot high. And as you walk in, you hear... Yes, 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 these people are here. They know what they're doing. Ah, 
Here they come now. These are the great folk that rid my city of the demon. And he gestures towards you and this massive stone creature just turns round towards you all and goes <laughs> And the king sort of okay. gives you a Go on, answer him. Do any uh, of us understand what he is saying? I don't know, do any of you speak primordial? Uh-uh. No, no. no. no I'm good. just gonna curtsy. What 13 right? thinks she does? The king sort of looks at you all and realises quite quickly that none of you can speak the same language and he goes, uh, Gazrim, can you uh, translate a little for him? And you hear this familiar voice go, well, they're kind of wanting to know if you were actually the ones who got rid of the demon. Do they mean the demon at Mantle Deris? Well, the one that's been bothering everyone, yeah. Then I guess so, yes. He says that he'd like us to go down to Graven all over them. Says he's where he's from. He's got this big demon problem down there. We could probably be useful. What's in it for us? Uh, they want to know what's in it for them. He says he's got a shiny rock. I want a hat. The uh, big one. The king is notably laughing at this point, and you hear. He says he can suit you with a hat, but they don't have many for your size. You know, they're all a bit bigger down there, and he gestures to the fact that it's a 13 foot high stone golem. That's fine. I want a really big hat. <laughs> he says that's fine. I'll give you a hat. What do you want now? Hmm. Think I want. I want money. He says the currency they have is in stone. He says he's happy to pay you in several ton of stone. Fine. Oh, he says he'll even throw in a shovel. You already have a shovel. (laughs) I'm going to hide the shovel sort of behind my legs. Mala's given up at this point. She's <laughs> never going to get paid, is she? <laughs> Not properly. I think it would be safest for us to agree and try. I don't much fancy disappointing a 13-foot golem standing in front of me. Technically, he's not going to squish us in front of the king. I hope. That would be really uh, rude. It would. But I agree. If there's a demon... I want to kill it. And Gazrim then goes, Wonderful! Right, I'll go and get packing. I'll be back in a minute. And he runs Shit. out of the room. Sorry, guys. I think I may have agreed. That is fine. In fact, wait. I wish to ask the king if they are finding their tunneling any easier since the demon has gone. Well, I've been trying for a while, but... Again, it doesn't seem to be giving up much, but we are still trying. I'll send word if we get anywhere. So there's still no way to get to the surface? We've not found the surface. The stone is still unfriendly. When you say unfriendly, what do you mean? We dwarves has an affinity with the stone. We don't have that here. It rejects us. It doesn't it's feel safe or right. It is and very, very strange. But when you got down here... You said that this city has been here for a while, yes? Well, we we built this city. Yes, and it's been here for a couple of years, or...? Uh, it's been about 20 years since we started. And since then, you've been stuck down here, unable to go to the surface? Yeah, we've not been able to get anywhere. Do you have any historical texts about your travel down here? Gazra may have made something, but we didn't have a scribe for the longest time. We couldn't make ink, you see. Since our objective is to get to the surface, is there anything you think that we'll be able to do to help you? Well, to be honest, killing demons is always a good thing, right, brother? (laughs) Ah, that's right. See, bit of a joker. 
Mm. He sort of looks at all of you and, it gets, and goes like, you really can't understand what he's saying, can you? Mm-hmm. There is um, there is not much call for speaking primordial in a drow city. At this point, the rock golem turns back to the king and goes... Right? You want them to send to you? Right, well... It'll take them a while to get there, you know that, right? Alright, alright, I'll give them provision. They'll see you in a few weeks. Fine, a week, I'll give them a cart. And the sort of golem turns to face you, bows slightly, and then begins to make for the exits. I curtsy back. I just um, watch in suspicion. So. Guys, I'm really sorry. I have to do this. I've been dying. I'm going to explode. We built this city on rock and roll. I'm so sorry. King just looks at you confused. <laughs> no self restraint. Oh, God. At this point, I've heard of this bardic song. I'm I just so sorry. Something. <laughs> The golem sort of leaves. You want to ask the king anything before Kazrum gets back? Okay, what provisions are we talking about? Well, I'll have to send you to Graven Hollow from here. It's a long journey by cart, but it can be done. We've done it once before. This guys are in the way. We'd send you the same way that they go, but uh, you don't want to see the way the stone giants go. None of us are not uh, squishy enough, shall we say, to survive it. I see. Hmm. Any chance we'll run into Drow on the way down there? Well, we can yes. give you what weapons we can, but it's your small enough group, I don't think they'd notice you. I raise an eyebrow at Ishidoro. I kind of like just turn around and start walking away a little bit, just to get out of the sight of the king and kind of gesture to everyone to kind of like go for some place where we can talk amongst ourselves. Oh. So we're going to like form a not discreet huddle in the yeah. throne room. We're just gonna look at a king and be like, like King's just like <laughs> Shut outside the showroom of the throne room more like it, but yeah, the general idea. Just yeah, exclude I'm... the king for a moment. I'm picturing this thing <laughs> <It's> like <laughs> throne room your throne throne throne. pillars and we just all shuffle up. <laughs> Begging your pardon, your majesty. One moment. And I'm like, so what do we think? I mean it's a demon. I don't have any issues with that, but it seems like we're, we're going further deep back in. Yes. I'm not too keen this on that. Will, this will take us deeper again, but if they cannot find the surface from here, then I do not see any harm. The harm is getting eaten by demons. Was we not talking about sneaking out through the drill camp? Because they can get to the surface. They can. This is true. However, we won't be able to get to a drow camp if we stay in the city. Mm. I agree. I think that dealing with this demon will give us a new location, at least, to check and see what is going on. The drow camp that trades with the surface or goes to the surface will be very heavily guarded. They will be well armed. The more resources we can acquire, the better. Mm. Please, just a question. Hypothetically, if we were to get our hands on a drow, would you be able to interrogate them? <laughs> but of course. Maybe we could do that, find out, like, because clearly, and I say it in a very hushed tone, the king does talking about the stone not speaking to them properly. Maybe the drow might be more co- cooperative if we, you know, twist an arm or something. Twist off an arm. At which point I'm going to again sort of push the shovel behind me because it still has a bit of arm connected to it. (laughs) You know, you should name that thing. It's a great weapon. Okay. Look, I'm not happy about us going deeper into this place, but I really do think that we should try and help the people here while we are here because we can't get out onto the surface. I'd be happier if you get paid. I miss my old job. Not that there's anywhere to spend money here. They did mention a big, nice rock. I mean, which was stone. 
I'm going to collect on that stone. Mm. In fairness, shiny stone can be valuable. Not everything's about money. Nearly everything is. <laughs> no. Rent, food, every, every your clothes, is your about weapons. Is the Medicine. king looking at us? <laughs> If because if he, because if he is, I'm going to just turn around and, like, snicker and then look back into the group. Just yeah, 13 <laughs> slowly turns around and looks at me. Oh. drops her head into her hands, like, no. Everything is about having enough power or leverage to stay alive. So it's agreed, then. We grab a drow and we make him tell us what they know about getting to the surface. You sound very much like a drow. Very much like a drow. I There's just kinda... nothing wrong with that. I do the Will Smith thing, where like I point dramatically towards her. <laughs> <laughs> oh, just by the way, what language are we speaking? I'm assuming it's common because we all speak yeah. common, but not uh, everybody speaks common. Yeah, common it's the only is... common one. Okay. Common yeah. has become the only language. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, great. Really okay. Before Gazrun comes back, I would like to do a geology check, please. Sure. Might also want to do a demonology and arcana type check mixed with it. Mm hmm. I do not know much geology. You don't know much I'm... about it. You sort of tap the stone, you say, I don't see what the dwarves are having a problem with. Tap, 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 and the stone's just not crumbling at all. Can I try with arcana? Mm hmm. Even worse. You can't tell anything from it. It definitely doesn't seem like there's anything you can really work with. I turn to the other pyromaniacs in the group and I say, Do you know what we should do? We should get stuff that can cause fire. Yes! Yes. Why? Fire so is we can useful. start fires. Fire is useful against demons, against people who live in the dark. I was about to say that lighting a fire within the enclosed space of the Underdark Band, given the smoke and all, but would the smoke not seek the highest point? Would that not show a possible way out? That's a very good idea. Let's start a fire. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. No, no, it's a good idea. <laughs> the best idea. Okay. Turn around to the king and walk up bowing and I'm like, Great king, in our provisions, could we have some form of flint and tinder and uh, torches and possibly flammable liquid if you have any. Well, we've got some alcohol made from mushrooms. It's... I wouldn't call it flammable, but y your legs do go after after a few drinks. Yeah, it's not about setting a fire inside. It's more about setting a fire externally. I see. We've got a few things. Got a little oil. Not much, though. Can we have some of it? I suppose we could spare a little. Sure. This is just a question in general. Like, how is this place lit up like, what form of lighting do they have? Is it they have, uh, magic? Yeah, they have some sort of, like, light stones kind of thing. I ask if I could borrow a couple of those. We could have some. Oh, that you'd have to ask Gazrim, but sure. And then I just start, like, bowing profusely while returning to the safety of the hut. <laughs> <laughs> if I were to examine and study the light stones, would I be able to work out something of their magic? You could try, yeah. Because that sounds like it's something that would be very useful to have. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Especially if we need to be able to make our own at some point. If we could somehow amplify the light, it would be a very useful thing. Well. At this point, Gazrum returns, pulling a sort of robe on him. He looks like he's got a sort of backpack with him containing several bits of scroll, and he's like hurriedly trying to like bottle some sort of ink in one hand. I offered to help him carry some of it. I'm back, I'm back, I've got all the stuff, we're going to ride a good adventure. Great. Excellent. And could you get us some of those stones that give off light and the king has oh, allowed us to take some Oh, it's just a simple light. light spell. Oh, okay. Can we have some? Well, it's a, you know, family secret, you know, but I could do it for you. Okay. Like, you he, could he teach sort of us picks how up to... a sort of loose tile on the ground and he sort of whispers something under his breath and it begins to glow faintly. Ooh. Wow. Can I roll Arcana to identify the process by which he did? Sure. Hmm. That's roll really 20. Yes, you basically establish everything but the exact word he said. Hmm. Okay. Wow. I ask him for the word. 
Like, what's the word you said there? Oh, I can't tell you that. It's a family secret. Okay. I'll keep watching him. <laughs> Ishidoro, if you can teach me what you found, I might be able to manage it because okay. I have this strange magic inside of me that I don't know how to control, so a word might not be helpful. Hmm. I'll spend some time, like, teaching priests what I know, what I think is how he did it. Okay, we will do that once you're on the road in the cart, then. You want to ask the king anything else before you leave? I ask him, Great King, what do you know of the stone person's predicament? Anything oh, you can tell us? Oh, they helped us set up in the early days. They helped us build the city. Mm -hmm. They're a good soul. You know, not like those filthy trow. The giants yep. are healthy people. They're wonderful. The only problem is they guard the labyrinth to the south. A labyrinth? Aye. Hmm. Wonder if that's it? where the drow found those demons. Oh. Interesting. Okay. Do you know what specific demon troubles him? Has he given you any information that, you know... Uh, all he said was, how did you deal with your demon? We've got several. Oh, cool. Several. Several? Okay. I see. Do you have more Aye. salt, by any chance? <laughs> oh, we've got loads of salt. We can find some over there. Cool. We'll but, get uh, some. No, he, the cool. giant arrived, and he asked us what happened with the demon. He mostly seemed to come to us. He said that there was an absence of demonic feeling from here. So we told him that you got rid of the demon. He seemed very interested. It's interesting that there is so much demon energy around that the absence of it was notable. Was he coming to the city anyway? Or were they able to feel the difference from a distance? Ah, uh, they study the demons, you see. Ah. It's the three big stone giants. Mm. They all yes. study the demons. They know where they are. I asked Gazram if any of the shards of the stone we destroyed are left, or anything. Do you mean any shards of the gem? Yep. Well, uh, there might be one or two, but they've not got any power left to them. Okay, I'm gonna tell you something and you tell me if it's possible. Since the stone was housing a demon, or like anchoring it to the plane of existence, would it be possible for me to somehow, and then I start explaining a theory of how to like create maybe a tracking stone out of it, you know, like how a divining rod would work, but for demonic energy? Well, you, you see think? that the runes written on the side of the stone are for that demon. Uh -huh. So it wouldn't really work, I'm afraid. Okay, so there's no way to repurpose it to just detect demons. I don't think you'd be able to do that, no. Well, I guess Maybe we'll the ask. libraries of Graven Hollow would have something. Okay. Sorry, just to clarify, where are we heading now? We're heading to the great libraries of Graven Hollow. Okay, alright. It'll be a few days on the cart, but, you know, we get to go past all the cities, get a, a bit of gossip on the way. Sounds good. Do you guys need anything? And I look at everyone else. Now's the time. String. Lots and lots of string. I've gotten what I need here. Okay. Gazrum fishes through his pockets and finds a very large ball of string for 13. Tinder. Need more string. <laughs> Gazrum looks at you confused and goes to another pocket, finds another ball of string. <laughs> rope. rope would be good. I think we have a little bit of rope. We need lots of rope. Proper rope. And with... Oh, what's the word? Climbing hook thingies. A grappling yeah. hook. A grappling hook. Gazim sort of taps his pockets and goes, I don't have one of those. Oh, bloody hell. I'll have to go and get one before we leave. It might be <laughs> difficult since they have very little metal. Gazrum hands Layla another bit of flint and tinder. Wait. Okay. I'm so excited. I think I have everything I need. Okay. What's so. pulling the cart? It's kind of some sort of weird creature. It's not dissimilar to a horse, but it's not much horse it's more of a sort of like it's kind of what you consider like cattle but very much a sort of bizarre under dark creature cattle i see interesting so it's decided that we will try and capture and try and get some information out of some people i say this as quietly as possible as long as we can find someone with information i can get it out of them that's good do we really have to go that far can we just ask really politely I think we're too deep in it now. 
we've agreed to everything, everything set up. Like I said, I, I'm sorry. I do not think that anyone with the information we need would give it up without significant persuasion. And I roll out the torturers kit that I have. <laughs> yeah, now it cracks her knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. It does not necessarily mean violence. I mean, we could psychologically torture them by singing. You did the ginger <laughs> beer trick. That's a good one. Mm -hmm. We need um, ginger beer. I don't think the dwarves have beer. They only have. We don't much. have ginger, what? Sally. God, I miss ginger. Thirteen like sticks her thumb into her cheek, makes like the pop. <laughs> Thank you. I shall go and find two pounds of salt and ask Gazrim to help me consecrate it before we go any further, since it okay. worked well last time. Okay, so you've got this cart with food for a couple of days, this effectively barrel of salt. Is there anything Please else you want in the salt. cart before you leave? Stuff to set fire. Okay, you have a small flagon of oil. Very precious. Apart from that, no, I think it's fine. We all have the bows and arrows from the last time when we did the brow, so we'll keep it well up, okay? Okay. So, you head out of Gondogrin, and you immediately feel the winds hit you as your cart begins to head back south. So, we've all got kind of robes now, and you can like, pull them tight over yourself as you sort of break your way through the very harsh winds outside Gondogrin, and begin <laughs> heading back south. After about half a day's travel, you come to Blingdenstone, and immediately when you hit in Blingdenstone, it seems everyone in Blingdenstone seems a lot happier. It seems that the fact the slimes have all disappeared means that less buildings are collapsing, so less people are dying, and more people are slowly returning to Blingdenstone. Do we still have Jimjar with us? Jimjar stayed behind in Gondogrim. Oh, I see. I guess you have too many people money. Well, <laughs> I wondered if you would want to go back to Blingestone or not. Is there really a acidic puddle of acid in there? Yes, your really acidic puddle of acid is still in the middle of town. Like a giant pothole that like belts anything that goes in it. It seems like a fair trade. Yeah, I mean, it's a city uh, feature now. It's the waste disposal. It's a way to get rid of bodies. I like how you think. <laughs> So, is Gazrim wanting to stop here? You stop briefly in Blinding Stone for a couple of hours to sort of like feed your beast and sort of hear the sort of local chatter of what's going on. Everyone seems to be quite confused that the slimes have stopped. There is still talk on the air of Glabago. Mm -hmm. Several guards have went missing, but in the last like day or so, sightings of Glabago have seemed a bit less. You also um, notice at this point, Stool is very vacant. Stool? Are you talking to Eric by any chance? Huh? Are you okay? Yes! Friend Eric is talking to me again! Yes, I thought he might be. He's such How a great is... friend. How is he? He's very happy and he wants to thank Rastikos. Um, tell him that he's welcome. Okay. But... What have I done? Still just looks yeah. at you confused. Why is Eric saying thank you to Rastika? Yes, that's... I mean, Isidora was the one to cut out the brain of the pudding game. He sort of looks a bit vacant and then he comes back a couple of seconds later. He just says thank you. He's nice like that, friend Eric. Okay, thank you, Stool. Thank you, Stool. And I cuddle Stool back in. Okay. In fact, no, we are on a car. He can just be sitting on the cart and like yeah, swinging yeah. his little feet. I don't like the sound of this Eric. I mean, we should meet him at some point. It's suspicious. Oh. I think it's incredibly suspicious. I doubt that Eric is omnipresent, as uh, he was said. I bet not. 10 gold we have to stab him in the end. <laughs> I mean, first Do off. Do you have 10 gold? Now pull out the. I think, yeah, I've got two bags of coins. Where did you get that from? Bodies. I Presumably she got it from where we get all our stuff, which is at this point dead drow. Well, uh, yeah. I suppose that's okay. Economy. Yay. <laughs> <laughs> How does Dole react to our suspicions of Eric? 
Stu just seems to be in a world of his own. Okay. Hmm. I'm going to keep an eye on Stool and see when he sort of becomes himself again, like when he starts noticing things about him rather than talking to Eric. Like when we go away from the city. Just how far it happens. This seems to be an effective range that Eric had. Yes. I turn to Gazerum and I say, have you ever heard the name Eric? Oh, I know many Erics. I know uh, Eric the Beard, Eric mm-hmm. the Beardless, mm-hmm. Big Eric, Small Little Eric. Eric. Yeah. Any uh, Eric's that know magic? Oh, not really, no. It would have to be an Eric that does not live in Gontelgrim. Oh, it seems right. To be um, from here to slightly further deeper, that Eric communicates with Stool. Well, I don't really know that many Eric's outside Gontelgrim, no. Hmm. So are you writing all this down, Agazer? Our adventure? Well, I'm trying to dictate everything that happened. So far, I've only got the story about 13 eating bugs. <laughs> oh. Thirteen's going to have a nap now. And she curls up and goes to sleep. <laughs> yeah. You should write about that. <laughs> Nal takes out her dusty blanket and just puts it over 13. <laughs> Shall we move on? Okay, so on your journey between Blindenstone and the next stop, Stool asks Rastikos, So, is your hammer enchanted? Not as far as I know. Was that chain cropped up enchanted? I think so. I mean, not as far as I know. Speaking in character. (laughs) I just picked up the first weapon I found back in that other dwarven city, the name of which escaped me at the moment. In my memory, it's just the, the city that thought it could enslave and farm Dragonspur. Yes. So I have 17 bottles. Good stuff. Grackle Are you stuff. guys talking about this loudly? I mean, yes. you still ask me, so I presume I'm, I'm answering. Hey, yeah. Layla's gonna throw up over the side of the cart. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, it's just gonna rub Layla's back. Hold her hair I'm out. Gonna, I'm just gonna go, Layla, Layla, look here, look here. And then when she looks, I'm gonna say, Dragon spot. And then I'm going to throw up again over the side of the car. Good oh, to know. Get it over <laughs> each. Can I try and push Ishidora out of the cart? <laughs> push him into the vomit. Oh. <laughs> yeah, just I sort should. of take him and yeah, just move over the side. Me. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. So, after about another half a day's travel, you arrive on the edge of Netherlight Grotto and already as you get closer you notice something is very strange. If you remember last time you were in Netherlight Grotto it was sort of bathed in a light that lasted a, like roughly about an hour of your time before it changed colour. Yes. As you approach mm. every seven seconds the light seems to change to a different colour. That is concerning. You I look better to keep stool. an eye on stool. Yes. Does stool seem any different from usual? Stool seems alarmed. It's okay, we will have a look, but we'll need to be very careful. Should we go by foot and leave Stool here since he's not that, feeling... That might be wise. He might be at risk. Something is clearly very wrong. But then, we left just before that wedding. Yeah. yeah. Should we really go back there? That's a good point. Do we have to go into the city? I don't see- you get close to it, you hear the sound of screaming. Physical oh scream or inside our heads? It's inside your head, but it's like manic screaming like someone panically trying to do something. Oh dear. How is Stool? Stool seems worried and wants to check it out. Now this is an important question. This type of screaming, is it the manic screaming of someone trying to escape something? Or the manic screaming of someone who perhaps has built something and now it is not working, so they're thumping at it, going, why won't you work? Or, you know... It's the sound of panically trying to do something. Okay. Can I roll a quick demonology check, or would I have to get closer to figure out if that's... You would have to get a bit closer than that for the moment. I will jump off the cart and start making my way closer. Okay, so you said the screaming sounds like someone is panicking, but they're panicking about doing something. Does it sound like they need help with something, or...? As you sort of like glance through the sort of scattered view, you can see you see lots of myconids like running here and there, carrying like big like handfuls of stuff here and there, and seem to be like stockpiling. 
Mm. Lots and my of stuff. Constant, what looks like either food or debris. Can I just walk up to one of them and ask them what's going on? You can, yes. You walk into the city and you ask one of them hey, what's going on. They ignore you. But as you're sort of looking around, you notice that there are at least 15 of them like sprinting around desperately, like exhaustedly carrying everything. And you notice one or two of them have also like collapsed from exhaustion. In the middle of it all there... seems to be Philo, who's consulting a gigantic book. Oh, okay. We are going to need to talk to Philo, aren't we? Mm. Ugh. Can I roll that demonology now? Yep. Is there any indication of that weird kind of growth stuff anyway? Growth stuff? That killed the other guy that was like oh, basically right, sort of eating him like alive. Mushrooms growing up the side? No. You don't yeah, see all like of that. that yucky fungi. Not at the moment, anyway. I see. Are there any of the braziers with the green smoke? You see sort of smoke in the distance, but it seems further away than it was. Okay. Dumb question. Might be good. But mm-hmm. the giant mushroom that was growing, is it still the same? Yes, you notice that as you sort of look off to the side, off to where the gardens were, you notice that all the sort of things that were blocking the way to the giant mushroom, mm-hmm. the sort of giant sort of tower-like mushroom that you saw, it all seems to have been cleared away. So you can see it far clearer. Okay. I'd like to uh, go and talk to one of the myconids that has collapsed from exhaustion and ask it, what is it you are trying to do? Okay, you speak to one of the ones that's collapsed, it's too busy, like, panting furiously, and when you try and talk to it, you don't get a response. Hmm. Mm. That's... Yes. Right. The myconids that are rushing around, do they seem to be sort of, let's say, acting independently, or does it look like they're being controlled by something? It doesn't look like they're thinking for themselves. It looks like they're too busy trying to get everything else done. Hmm. But they did have that to some extent anyway. Yeah, I know they've got a bit of like a hive mind thing going, but before they still had, there were difference of, differences of opinion and all of that stuff the last time that we were here. Yes. Yes. But now, like, this seems a little bit weird. I mean, especially if they're running themselves to the point of exhaustion. Well, most of the dissenting... My kids left, and we left. Yeah. So we just didn't go in the same direction. I don't know. Just, it seems a bit odd. See one of the ones that's carrying something in its hands, like it's mm-hmm. taking it somewhere. Yep. Thirteen's going to run after one of those and, like, follow it. Okay. Now they will follow seem, after. <laughs> they seem to be stockpiling food and supplies in, like, all the buildings that were sort of houses, they seem to have allocated some to be, like, food stockpile places. Okay. And they seem to be, like, properly stockpiling food in there. So I'll cautiously walk up to Philo and just raise my hand and say, Hello, long time no see, friend. Philo turns to you and goes, Ah, welcome, friend, welcome. Welcome to the first city. Um, the inn is over there, you can have some comfort. Go about your business. Uh, if you seem busy, is there any way we can help? They sort of look at you and go, no, no, no. You haven't seen Pisidia or Yesterbrood about, have you? No, no. Well, oh, did, well. did you need them for something? Well, you know, the great wedding is soon and we need all the help we can get, but it's not for outsiders, it's fine. Just return to the inn over there, it's fine. I'm afraid the gardens of welcome are closed off at the moment. Why? Preparing for the speech, you see. So there are gardens of not welcome. For the moment, yes. The inn is over there. You'll be more than welcome in the inn. Who is the it? speech? Is it the wedding speech, or is it a speech for something else? It's the wedding speech, but you know, it's just for our kind. You're not welcome there. Outsiders are not required. Too bad, Gazrim. You can't record the wedding. You can't put it in poem and make a song oh, about bloody it. Bloody hell! I'd love to write about that. I know it's tough. I'm trying to ask Philo here, but not cooperating. And Philo sort of looks, looks up at Gazrim and goes, No, no, this is an important time for my people. We can't have outsiders. But it must be recorded. Are you recording it? It'll be monumental in my people and will be remembered for generations. The snail man invited us. Oh, well, yeah. Yes, the boat invited you. Yeah. Where is we he? Asked where he was going to be then. Yeah, We're he was sitting on the side where... of the bride. 
Hmm. I will check if you are on the papers. But for now, I'll make your way to the inn. I don't think that's a good idea, Layla. <laughs> Listen, there's something really weird going on here. I yes, think we need bride... to set the garden on fire. The bride is the weird thing. At this point, one of the other kids rushes up and hands Vilo a piece of paper and says, What side did you say you were sitting on? Left. Left. Hmm. Maybe you are welcome. Hmm. How do you know the bride? Cassins. Hmm. So you two are a mushroom? Ha! Yes. We've had uh, interactions with her relations. Hmm. 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 I'm not sure. But I suppose if Yesterbrood has approved you, then hmm. Come. And Philo walks and you follow on. A couple more mushrooms sort of move in between you and Philo. They seem very protective of Philo. Mm. And as you walk through the Gardens of Welcome, you notice that it's very much been cut back and everything's been reduced from what it was. It seems like if anything the ground's been like dug clear and all the sort of debris and like you remember those the giant balls of like mm. detritus that they were rolling around some yeah. of them lie stagnant at the side and unmoving it's like they've sort of given up doing that side oh very strange as you sort of go over the small hill within the gardens of welcome you are gestured to what looks like a sort of bench made out of plants one side and says you will sit here this is the bright side you may watch my speech if you wish. Thank you. In front of you is quite a large raised platform, and behind the raised platform is this massive sort of pinky purple mushroom. It's like a 20 foot high tower. I see. Okay. Um, Can I roll demonology to see if there are any like weird malicious energies up in here? Mm hmm. <sighs> you don't detect the thing. You're joking. All you hear when you try and focus about demonology is you just hear the sound of like Mike and his rushing around. Because there are still like Mike and his rushing around everywhere, like trying to effectively kind of tidy up. Could I do some sort of arcana or demonology comparison of this giant Mike on it and the one in like the town square? Mm hmm. Demonology or arcana? Do arcana. You can't seem to notice anything. Everything just seems to be very high energy and hectic at the moment. It seems like the Mykonids are existing on a plane that makes them like four or five times more active than they should be. Is the weird flame creature around? Any of the cauldrons around? The cauldrons, as I said before, have looked like they've been like pushed right back to the like mm -hmm. as far away as possible from where you are. Mm -hmm. And no sign of the snail. No. This giant mushroom, what does it look like? It's the bride. The one sort of place where you're standing, there's this massive, like, pink, like a sort of tower. It looks like it's very anchored to the ground, so it's very much a sort of building. The only other person you can see is Philo. You said it's a building, does it have an entrance? It does have an entrance of a sort of mic in its size entrance. Oh, maybe the bride is inside. Maybe. You said mic in its size, so, uh, 13? Do you want to go take a look? What's inside? I don't know. Maybe there's something for you to steal or a cool hat. <gasps> See this cool hat. <laughs> if there are any myconids nearby while Thirteen is sneaking in, I will ask them for mushroom wine or some kind of drink. Okay. Oh. As, as you're all sitting there and Thirteen gets up and moves forward, immediately myconids rush over and go, "No, no, you can't, you can't go forward. You must stay here. We can't let anyone sit, near I, 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 I want to sit in the front row. But you are in the front row. Like, further up front. Closer. But this is as close as the wedding party gets. Are you sure about that? Well, you're the only people there. <laughs> I know, but like, I'm just questioning. But Can 13, so like, really dramatically and very suddenly point in a totally opposite <laughs> direction <laughs> on the door? I'd be like, oh, what's that? <laughs> I will bound over 13 okay. and run in that direction. As you do that, Philo is giving this great speech to everyone about how the Mykonid race are going to be mighty and grow and they will unite with the Rumikos and together they shall grow to be stronger, faster, taller, forever. They will be together in this. And as he gets to this dramatic point, you notice behind him, slowly rising, this almost opaque 
It's like the green tinged, like jelly. Just getting bigger and bigger and bigger. Oh god, this looks Can familiar. Until it's the same height as the building. And as Philo reaches this crescendo of forever we will be this, and all the Myconids are looking where you're pointing, Philo turns round and is basically like <laughs> swallowed by this massive jelly. Oh my gosh. As Philo struggles, you hear Sto applauding really loudly and shouts, <laughs> Eric made it to the wedding! Sto? Oh my god. <laughs> 13 would like to turn around and run in the opposite direction away from the jelly. No, okay. just this. Called it. They all owe me. <laughs> I want to. I have no money! What, what is Eric? What is Eric? So, at this point, Philo is within this, like, gigantic green tinged jelly and is thrashing around and as the sort of thrashing gets more and more violent Philo begins to sort of like spark and after a couple of seconds Philo switches shape and becomes this about 12 foot tall like spindly looking demonic creature mm. that continues to writhe within the jelly as if it still can't get its way out and at this point you notice at the back of the jelly is what looks like the decayed remnants of a stale shell Fucking do it. Oh, I had not expected this. Oh, poor oh, no arms. God. Can I get the barrel of salt, or is it still on the cart far away? Still on the cart outside the town. Damn it. Let's run back. Let's go get the salt. Bro, as we run, I am grabbing stool and being like, why the hell did you come into town? Eric's got a present for us. He's got a present for us. Friend Eric. Where? I think. Right. Rassel goes will start walking towards the cube, though he will ready his sledgehammer. Okay. Oh my god. After about oh, two or three god. minutes of this massive, as I said, about 12 foot creature, like quite spindly looking demonic creature writhing around, it eventually, like, again, sparks a bit and begins to shrink down, and it ends up shrinking down into what looks like another about eight inch high green tinged gem. It looks very similar to the one you saw before. Mm hmm. And then oh. the gem seems to be slowly pushed towards the edge and then just falls out with a sort of ding ding as it lands on the ground and this cube just starts backing away. Okay. So I guess at this point Rastikos has made it to Eric and seen this happen. Yep. What is that? I'll yell over to the rest of them that I presume is still about where we sat. Yeah. And at this point Stool is still clapping like a contented child and says, Eric says he has a present for you. Oh dear. Killer, he says Rastikos knows what to do with it. I have a suspicion, but is it safe to pick up? Uh, use your hammer! <laughs> yes. 13 shouts from whatever hiding place she ran off. At this point, you hear Gazrim sort of go, Well, if, if he's wanting to destroy it, he can't break it here. The demon will just end up coming back. I yeah, that is like... a demon. I'm pretty sure that's a demon. Any hallowed ground nearby? I mean, well, this is a wedding been... site. Well, there's another forge in Grackleslow. I can bless that. Wait, I look around to everyone else. Oh, is that no, we don't need to go back there, do we? Uh, uh, well, uh, right, Rastikos will shrug and pick up the green gem. Okay. Oh dear. Immediately like when you pick up the gem, you get this image of your mind of this very sort of tidy looking demon that's sort of like quite spindly with its fingers clasped together that goes you know that you could just do all this on your own right you don't need others fuck um <laughs> i'm gonna take my cloak off and try and like cover the gem and yank it out of rastikos's hand do i have to do you no, but well, is this not happening is... in his head? Yeah, no, is... but like, he's touching the gem. Last time someone was close to the gem, they were possessed the... by it. Oh, okay, I don't know that, because, yeah, I don't know that. I'd love to get help from Ishidoro, but didn't you run in the opposite direction? When <laughs> yeah, I went... <laughs> went um, Listen. Yeah, so I'm just like, um, kind of running all over the place. So, <laughs> you tell me if I can do it. You continue sprinting up towards Rastikos and like... Rastikos is very willing to believe that particular argument. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay, do I have to roll anything to grab this thing? Do I anything? have to roll anything before he does? <laughs> <laughs> no, it, it, it's just all you hear is this, like, voice in your head just telling you that you could, in fact, have everything you ever desire. So now I've been watching all this happen, 
and she has two sized rocks that she picked up. I'm gonna take one and seeing that Rasmus is picking up the gem, she's gonna just throw it as hard as she can at his hands. <laughs> sure. Okay. Try to knock it out. Yeah. Okay, can I ask a question quickly? Yep. Since I wasn't here last week and I don't actually know what's going on, do I need to roll to try and figure out that this is a bad thing for him to have it? Or can I just deduce that from everybody trying to get the I damn thing away from you can just deduce him? that from everyone's reaction. <laughs> Panicked, okay. everyone screaming. I'm going to hit Rastikos on the head with the spade. <laughs> it's for nice okay, night. It? Roll the head, Rastikos on the head with a shovel. Oh damn. Oh, I hope this does not do We need to set things. some ground rules for demonic mm. repossession. You crack <laughs> Rastikos in the back of the head. He staggers forward a bit and drops the stone. I cover it. Okay. I've been hit okay. in the back of the head by a marble shovel. <laughs> yeah. I have a question. Since I am technically an infernal creature, do I have any kind of maybe resilience to something like that? Could I just pick it up? You could pick it up. You'll get the same sort of offers as anyone else that touches Is it. Is it the same? I wouldn't let you pick it up. Like, I know what it did to the Rast person, so... I would like to do a demonology check on Rastikos. Okay. He's basically had a, a sort of demon in his head, but it's very faint demonology. Very, very faint demonology. Okay. I'm going to shout at him. <laughs> As you do. You need to not touch things with demons. Bad human. <laughs> I'm still unconscious on the ground, I guess. You're not unconscious, you're just like staggering just forward, staggering like holding your head, point. like, ow! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Oh dear, I'm so now. sorry. That's actually what Layla's going to do. She's going to walk up to him and go, oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. <laughs> I'm so sorry for hitting you with a shovel. <laughs> I am busy tying this thing up in cloak that I had, just so okay. that no one's touching it. I don't want to touch it, I'm just holding it further away from my body, like it thinks. Okay. So, as you do this, Stool is still applauding and saying, Isn't Eric such a lovely, friendly friend? Yes, and I... he is delightful. Where can I find him? Oh, I'll ask him. Thank and you. And he sort of looks far away and, and he goes, Eric says he will be about. I'm sure he will. I told him that friend Rastikos can deal with gems. He was very happy. Well... I see. I have a theory about Eric now. Hmm. Now he's a gelatinous cube thing. No. That seems to be able to get demons to apparate? I don't think... I mean, no, most things not, get dissolved when not. inside. I don't think the jelly is Eric. So you don't think it does? I don't. It could be. But I don't think so. Right, Gazrim. You're talking about hallowed ground? Well, yeah, I, I, I think mean, you need to get out of here. The nearest hallowed ground is probably Grackleslow, oh. which we've not heard anything from in the last um, week, actually. I wonder do, why. Do we explain? I shake didn't my head violently. Didn't we explain what happened to Grackleslow? No, we've never been there. When, oh, I mean, Grackleslow's a great place. They've got this, like, massive dragon that lives there. It's wonderful. Yeah, he he's super know. angry. Did King Bruno not give you our report? Uh, no. Why? Bruno asked us what we'd seen in our travel to Gontelgrim. Aye. We had a stop in Grapplestuck, and we escaped during the dragon's rampage through the city when it broke its You don't bonds. say it got out. I mean, what is the dragon going to do if it gets out? I mean, there's not anything it can do. We're underground, it can't fly anywhere. Well, it can fly. It's still a dragon. We, we didn't stay long enough to see which side won out. We did see that there was fire. A lot oh, of fire. Right, well, that's going to make the next part of the journey very interesting. Mm -hmm. Indeed. As I stuff the cloth with the stone into the salt barrel. <laughs> Just... Okay. So... I'm going to help Rastikos back to the car. <laughs> So I'm really There's sorry. Concussion. All the Myconids now, they're all sort of standing completely still. It's as if they were all getting orders what to do and now they've just got nothing left. So they all just seem to be like, blank. Should we tell Stool to help them out? Tell them where to go? I asked. will figure it out. 
I'm going to speak to one of them. Are you okay? Can you go back to as you were before all this started? There is just silence. Well, we've done all we can. Maybe we should leave Stool here. I don't think Stool will stay. He likes she's too much. I think we give him the choice, but okay. I'm also concerned. Do you remember what happened before when Stool had blended mm. with some yes. of his people? Yes. I fear that his okay, memories. Well, we'll yes, his memories yeah. on top of this emptiness could yeah. be fatal. How's the light looking? The light that keeps going from the tower that so it's stopped. The, it's completely dark now? Yep. Okay. Well, I'm not sure what we can do, to be honest. Does it does anybody know what this place is, is meant to be like? I mean having come from the surface I have absolutely no clue. Like could we for example, could I roll something like law or like history or whatever because Maybe there's something that just needs to be like rectified and then they'll wake up again. <laughs> Where's the reset button? Yeah, exactly. Where's the reset button? <laughs> well, as far as I know, they had two leaders and they need a leader to function. And since the leader is in the salt barrel, I think they're... Well, we know roughly the direction that um, the rest of them went in. Yes. Those who were not fooled by Philo left. Yes. But the fact that Philo, as we've discovered, was a demon and had plans to join the Myconids with another force, would that force not possibly also be demonically corrupted? So yeah, what you're think... saying is we should burn the garden. I'm in favour of this. With, with Philo removed, the question is, would the remaining Myconids be happen as victims of the other demonic force, or will that force seek, pardon the pun, greener pastures? I would like to do a demonology check, please. Okay. Is it, is the general demonology energy here fading or getting stronger? Even with that lower roll, it's mm -hmm. definitely fading. Okay. It seems to be pulsing more from your salt barrel now than anywhere else. I suspect that whatever it was that that demon wanted, it's already got it. I don't think they're in any more danger here at the moment, but how safe they are, even without a demon around, is debatable. I think we should get rid of the thing. Getting rid of that gem will probably give them their best chance. Is there any sign of that snail guy? The snail guy was dead behind the jelly. Oh. I saw the shell. It had already eaten Istrabod. To be honest, he wasn't looking so hard when we first saw him. Yes, he very much looked infected by something. I feel really bad just leaving them like this. You can't do much. I mean, they're probably going to die if they don't snap out of it. If we keep going, we might be able to find their other leader. They might be able to do something to help them. If we move them, are they like, do they resist? Or do they just like move wherever we push them? What do you mean? Like, if I push them, do they like walk or do they resist? If you that? push one of the Myconids, it just slowly topples backwards. I write the one I push down. I'm like, okay, sorry, sorry, just testing things out. Are they still alive? Do they still have soul, is my question. When you check them for like, are there sort of, is there life left in them? There seems to be, but they seem to be in a, a sort of state of stasis. Oh. Okay. Perhaps. Once we break the gem... It would be possible. Yes, it might be holding something from them. Hmm. Given that also... hard mind like stature. Yes. I have another question. We couldn't go into the big other building, the, the tower. They stopped us. But now yeah, that was no where the stopped. bride was, again. Yeah, yeah no Do one's stopping us now. You can go into the tower if you want now. There's nothing to stop you. I'd like to go into the tower. What's okay. in the tower? You open the door, it's built for a mic in it, so the door's only maybe like three foot tall. Thirteen, would you like to? Uh, okay, sure. Okay, basically thirteen goes in. Inside there's a set of stairs, she sort of like runs up the stairs and it leads to a sort of like... She walks carefully up the stairs, I'll have you know. <laughs> okay. They're small. This is like a little person's place. Thirteen's like, this is nice, everything's kind of to scale to me. 
No, you appreciating finished. Appreciating the real estate. Yeah, she's <laughs> like, I like these what? little stairs. She walks slowly, daintily, and carefully up the stairs. Gets to the top, and all there really is is a small, like, it's like a sort of Rapunzel balcony. Is there a window? Can she lean out it and wave it? There is a window she can lean out of, yes, and a wee sort of small balcony. She does that. So and we see it's it. just a balcony 20 foot up. Is there anything she can, like, pick up and drop? And... You sort of look around, see if there's anything. There doesn't seem to be much. There's, like, a couple of, like, loose bits of stone and stuff like that. There's nothing much else. Any sign of the bride? Nope. So there's nothing. It's just empty rooms. All you see from the top there is the cauldrons in the distance and the like edge of this gigantic mushroom. How far away from the cauldrons is the mushroom? The mushroom seems to be like start at least on this side of the cauldrons. The cauldrons seem to be like along the edge of the great mushroom and, and then have a sort of like a wall of cauldrons. Roughly how many? Mm, there's about seven or eight. And are they like bubbling like they were before the last time we went? Yep, they seem to be bubbling, but the smoke seems to be blowing more the other direction now. And which direction is that? Is that like to another city or? It's basically blowing the exact opposite direction from where Nadalai Grotto is. Okay. While she's up in the tower, Thirteen's going to like check out the masonry work. Mm hmm. And was it built by mushroom people? It Would just it seems to be a built? natural thing, just like a lot of the other mushroom buildings. It's like made of mushroom. Mm-hmm. Can 13 take a bite? Does it taste good? You can bite the building if you want. Yeah! She bites the building. Let's see what effect biting the building has. True science at work here. What <laughs> <laughs> you guys always... The building is apparently off. very tasty to 13. Awesome! <laughs> <laughs> she's gonna like, take out a little dagger and take a big chunk and she's gonna like, take chunks for everybody and then she's gonna like, calm down the mushroom tower and come back out and give everybody a bit of mushroom tower and tell them about what she saw <laughs> okay. in an elaborate way. Okay, do we investigate further or do we just head oh, off to the next are dangerous. Place? Yeah, yeah we should destroy whatever's in them. What are you doing? Try anyway. Some kind of timeline for this other demon that we're meant to play. You said we should be there in a week. First, you've taken about direction. you've taken about two days so far to get to where you were. That's not too bad. What I want to find out is in which direction is it. So if we go towards the cauldron, is where we need to go in the same direction or it's the opposite direction? Currently pointing in a different direction from the way that you'd be going to go to Grakoslo. So it's like, say for example, it's like a triangle. You've came down from one side to go from Abingdon Stone to. Level at Grotto, you can go one direction to Grackle Slow, but you could also curl around after Grackle Slow and go to where the sort of cauldrons are blowing to if you wanted. Mm. What do we do? I would like to throw in the gem as soon as possible. The longer it stays in the material realm, the more chances it will to affect somebody and cause the demon to manifest. How did you destroy the last one? We smashed it on a sanctified anvil in Gauntlegrim. Okay, so that's where we need to go. We know Gontelbrun has one. Trim suggests going to Gragglestow, which might have one, and if not, he will sanctify one there. Though, Kashram, you have not mentioned why you couldn't sanctify any old block of rock, so that we might smash the gem on top of that. Perhaps it is part of the Water of Religion. Well, if you've got a forge that could smash demons, we need to be a big dwarven forager. At least something solidly like, you know, stone or metal. Something strong enough that could take the blow. Could I do some geology checks to see if I can find anywhere that might have sufficient solidity to do this? And you could if you want, yeah? Let's see if I can roll something decent. Makes a change. <laughs> you look around. Most places around seem to be made of, like, that sort of, like, spongy earth that you're sort of familiar with with the Underdark, or sand. Mm -hmm. The only sort of rock area you're familiar with is down, indeed, by Grekoslo. Ah, oh, damn. I think we will need to go closer to that. Foul. Maybe our friend the dragon is there. Dragon yeah. is still a powerful ally. Yes. You never know. He might help us if we agree to clean his claws again. He might help us anyway. He might. Yeah, I mean, Just he seems to be easily led. All you have to do is praise him a bit. He was very young. And scritches. And scritches. No special scritches. No. 
Sorry, what? I've forgotten oh, about God. that. I seem to have blocked out any memory of that. Uh, <laughs> probably for the best. I'm worried about where the bride may have gone. I don't think there was a bride to begin with. The, we were denied entry because the bride was in there. Yes, but they were possibly delusional. I'm Ooh, more curious I... about Eric. Did Rastikos tell us about seeing the demon? Uh, no. Okay. I mean, I... that happened very fast. Fair. Uh, I mean... Uh, I'm going to ask Rastikos, did you see or hear anything when you touched the gem? You know the sloth demon? Yes. Similar experience. Oh. Oh dear. But not slothful. Well, no, it looked like the creature we saw become the gem. You know, the oh. tall, spindly-looking thing. Did he say anything to you? Then it told me that I could do it on my own. So perhaps this is... pride? If we're dealing with sins, perhaps. Might just be appealing to my... Heroic nature? Okay, Desire let's... for recognition. Call okay, let's, want. let's set some ground rules. No touching strange gems and no hitting people over the head with a shovel if they touch a set gem, please. Okay. Or at least I'm not really the... sorry. <laughs> oh my god. I'll nurse the back of my head. Okay. <laughs> so what Layla wants to do is just try and sort of figure out if I can do something of the, the lump on the back of Rastico's head. You just sort of like rub it gently and eventually after a couple of minutes it begins to start going down but he looks very annoyed. <laughs> I'm so ashamed of myself right now. <laughs> uh, you did the right thing. I mean, you got the gem out of his hand. Oh Maybe a gentler God. approach. Now <laughs> gives her. Soft. She's going to start crying. Oh, Nal gives her a pat on the back and tells her she did good. I walk past Nal and I say, I owe you 10 gold. <laughs> I would like to check on Stool. How is he after seeing Stool. all of this? Stool seems relatively fine. He seems quite sort of, as before, he was quite content that the Eric appeared. Mm -hmm. Stool? So is that big green thing, Eric? You know, the one that swallowed Ilo. He sort of looks at you and goes, uh huh. Oh, okay. okay. So Eric is helping us out again? Eric is our friend! But why did he want to swallow Philo? Oh, Eric says Philo was not friend. Evidently. Okay. okay. I think Eric was right. You know what, this Eric guy, he's hard to place. But He is very hard to place. But I think he's not bad. For some reason, he is helping us at the moment. Why yeah. he is doing that and whether that will continue is another matter. I eat a bit of mushroom that 13 gave me. Is it tasty? It tastes <laughs> like wall. Like it's, I just crunch into it and I'm like, mm hmm? It tastes like sort of like oh, very, very heavy. It's just been eating. Yeah. Very dense mushroom. Really nice. Delicious. Yum, yum. Like imagine a brick made out of mushroom. <laughs> still, for this week at least. Join us again next week for more of our tale. This podcast is an adaptation of Out of the Abyss, a 5th edition D&D adventure. It was adapted from the original story by Nikolai Pupsky. The podcast features Nikolai Dragon Shiraz, Freya, Susie Q, Torno, and Wednesday Le Fay. 
All music was written and performed by Daniel Bustrom. Artwork was by John Moore. And if you, dear listener, wish to acquire your own sets of finest metal or acrylic adventuring dice, then journey through the underdark to dndice.co.uk and speak the name Penance RPG at the checkout for a 5% discount off your order. Farewell and Godspeed, for we fear the madness is closing in. Good night out there. Whatever you are. Ha 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 ha.